Hey gang, welcome to the Inside Wag Nutrition Podcast. I'm Josh. Hey there, I'm Chris. And today we have another Wag coach with us that uh, we're going to get to talk to and get to know a little bit more about. So Chris, why don't you go ahead and do the intro? All right, guys. Today we've got with us Alex Oskian. She is a registered dietitian. She has her master's degree in exercise science, and she is a competitive CrossFit athlete who has multiple podium finishes. And we're going to definitely get into that a little more today, uh, especially with the CrossFit Open going on right now. So we'd love to hear how her experience is going. And uh, just to kick things off, Alex, let's start with uh, where you're located and who you live with. Thanks for having me guys. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So where I currently live, I live in Northern California, um, about an hour north of Sacramento. Um, I live with my husband and my cat and my dog. Um, my husband's in the military and he is stationed up here. So that's why we live here in, in California. Mm. And you were previously in the Arizona yeah, region, um, Tucson, right? Before? Correct. We were okay. living in Tucson for about three years. That was his first duty station. And prior to that, we grew up in um, the Middle Tennessee area. Mm. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Living that military life. <laughs> it is. It's actually kind of <laughs> yeah. interesting and it's fun. I mean, it has its challenges, of course, but uh, the fact that I could live in different places, I never even dreamed about living. Like, never in my life did I think I was going to live in. Arizona. Never yeah, yeah. in my life did I think I was going to live in California. And then here I am like experiencing both places and they each have their own like unique um, things about it that are just makes it such a cool place to live. And yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you said previously that you would, you're going to retire in Arizona. Like you love <laughs> Arizona. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Still- both. Yeah. Yeah, both me and my husband loved it. Uh, one thing, the weather is awesome. Of course, the summers are super hot, but like um, from fall until spring, beautiful weather. It's like six degrees, 60 degrees, sometimes 70, rarely gets super cold. So you can do things outside all year round. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. The, <laughs> the area we lived in in Tucson, it, w- it had this like – big it was a big city but had a small town feel like it wasn't super industrial like phoenix was so it had some charm and just some character which i thought was just super cool but it had everything that you needed if you needed a nice mall it was there if you needed a million stores it was there but it it also had that outdoor where if you wanted to go out on a hike and just get lost you could if you wanted to go to the mountain there was a little mountain that had a little ski resort you could there's just all kinds of different things. That's great. That does yeah. great access to those things in Northern California too, right? Oh just yeah. A different yeah. <laughs> yeah. <kind. laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Like where I live, I'm either two hours from a beach or two hours from the mountains. So I can make a day trip um, to either one. And yes. it's pretty awesome. <laughs> of course, there's like the, um, the whole wine scene. So I could go to, to that if I wanted to, I believe, um, the the like redwoods are pretty close within two hours if i wanted to do that i could there's just all kinds of access and i don't think i the time that i'm gonna spend here in california i don't think i'll even like barely skim the surface of things i could Mm. do here in this state yeah i I, I mean right there that's that's so cool and recently you started getting into snowboarding too so i did nice (laughs) um i have the gym that I go to, uh, the owner is super into snowboarding and the, like within the first couple weeks I was here, she immediately asked, do you snowboard? I was like, no, but I'd love to learn. Um, I never had, like, I, I guess in middle Tennessee, we just didn't have that access. Um, sure. and it's an, ex- no. it's an expensive, like sport or mm-hmm. like hobby to do. Like you need boards, you need access to the ski, um, the ski slopes, things like that. And so it could get pretty expensive. So I just never did it as a child. Um, but the moment that this area got its first snow, she was like, let's go. And so I went up there, she taught me. It was the hardest thing I've probably like ever, <laughs> not ever done, but one of the hardest days mm-hmm. I've had in my life physically. Like I, I felt like I was just doing a million burpees. I'd fall down, I had to get back up, fall down, I'd get back up. <laughs> and the falls were not like an easy fall. It was hard. No. Like snow, falling in snow doesn't 
you wouldn't seem it was it would be like super hard on your body, but it is. Um, mm, but then I, it does. I felt like I was jarred the entire day. Like my <laughs> my brain was just shaken. Um, mm. But it, I ended up loving it. I've been going um, a few days. Granted, I'm I'm not a pro. Don't you're not going to see me on X Games next year. But <laughs> uh, but I'm 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 loving it. I'm I was, I'm hoping to go up this on saturday if the weather is good we're having a little snowstorm in the area so sometimes the the roads aren't the best and being from the south if there was like a thin layer of snow or dusting everything was shut down so i'm not a yeah. very good driver in the <laughs> snow so i don't take my chances on curvy roads up switchbacks mm -hmm. but yeah so if the weather's good and the snow and the roads are clear i'll be up snowboarding this weekend very Beautiful. cool that's what i plan on doing tomorrow for the first yeah. time this season. So yeah, I'm excited. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, that's crazy because like you would think it was a total, like Alex is in California and she's going snowboarding like for sure. Yeah. And you, Chris live in Colorado. So you would think that it would be like, you would be out like every <laughs> single day or it's just like a, yeah. it's a, um, I guess like a stereotype, you know, or, or something like mm -hmm. since you live in Colorado, you must ski or snowboard all the time. Right. right? You know, mm -hmm. When the mood strikes, but it is like as Alex said, like that, it is mucho dinero to uh, get off yeah. the ski slope. Oh, it's dude, not yeah, cheap for sure. Like it once is. the boards, bindings, and all the equipment's sorted out, it's still like the cost, the value of just going up for a day. Like it's a commitment. So yeah, it is. I, yeah. I do little four packs and just get up four times, and I'm pretty happy. I don't need the season pass anymore. You know, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, the season pass is where it's at. Um, there's something in this area called the Epic Pass. And yep. so military gets a really nice discount. So I'm able to go to some of the really oh, nice sweet. resorts for a really good price. It's just the fact that if you want to battle the uh, busyness of oh. those really nice resorts or not. Sure. In some exactly. days, it's not worth it. Like, I'm sure, no. it, Chris, you like understand in Colorado, there's those are hot spots to go to and people travel mm -hmm. near and far. And so it's really oh. busy. I-70 can just get atrocious. That's the main vein up through the Rocky Mountain Range and basically is the pit stop for along to all the, you know, resorts all the way from Loveland at the Eisenhower Tunnel all the way up to the Vale. And it's just, it can be insane. And that just takes some of the fun out of it, you know? Sure. Um, that's why we're waiting for that high-speed rail train one day maybe to go up I-70 to prevent all this. It'd be <laughs> beautiful to get up to the mountains in 20 minutes instead of that hour to two hours, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So like, I mean, I, I, like you said, snowboarding is like, you're pretty fit and, you know, getting the falling down, getting back up, falling down, getting back up. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, I mean, for a total side note, I think that's probably going to be the CrossFit open workout this week. I think we're, we're going to have to fall Our down fees. and get back up a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Definitely I, some version of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I don't know if I don't want to break up the interview or whatever too much, but I think no. that, I think it's uh I'm going to predict it. I think it's going to be burpee box jump overs and shuttle runs. That's what shuttle I think it's going to be. Shuttle I've runs. I've heard rumors, rumors of well, shuttle runs. Yeah, it was supposed to be in the open last year, actually. And they decided to sideline it and they moved it to the semifinals and the quarterfinals. And then I don't think there were shuttle runs in the games, but they did running in the games. They always do. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's That's. I think something weird like that, something unusual, something new is, uh, that's kind of what I'm feeling. What about you? I mean, I believe it. the, uh, the clue that Dave Castro posted, it kind of looked like shuttle runs back and forth. This yeah. Ball. Back and forth. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's a very accurate, uh, guess. So we'll, we'll see. see here in like an hour. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see soon enough. And we're going to both be totally wrong. You know that, right? And it's going to be public. Oh, we're going to be on here for the rest. This is going to be on the internet for the rest of our lives. We're going to be huge embarrassments. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We just got to go with it sometimes. Predictions are locked in now. That's right. yeah. Predictions yeah. are locked in. Yep. I um, see devil unders. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think jumping of some sort. If you have to go over a box, if you have to jump up off the ground, double unders, I think that there's going to be something like that. I don't know okay. what format that will come in, but uh, yeah. I mean, every open workout since the beginning has had double unders in it. Um, and burpees, right? And burpees, yep. And snatches. It and totem. the two consistent. So, yeah. Yep. So. 
I yeah, that first it. one was uh, knocked out a bunch of movements. So it's kind of like, I wonder what we are going to see because those are five big quintessential CrossFit movements all gone. Mm-hmm. All so, in one workout. Yeah. <clears throat> all one very hard soul crushing workout. So we'll see what's up this week. <laughs> um, so I guess like, yeah, kind of on that note, how did you get into like health and wellness or health and fitness in the first place? Actually, this is a pretty long story because it started all the way back in high school. It actually, and that was about 15 years ago at this point. Um, and it started out almost as an obsession. Um, I used to go to the gym a lot to just live on the cardio machines. And I wouldn't yeah. say live on it. I was living on them. Um, <laughs> and from there, it's it just drove a lot of other choices in my life. I um, wanted to go to college to become uh, or to focus on nutrition because I had a, an interest in it or an obsession. So I was like, well, since I like to focus on this. Let me just go to school for it. And then from yeah, sure. there, it led, it led to other choices where I took a personal conditioning class. And at the time, the the graduate teaching assistant was teaching CrossFit. Um, it was like very early on. I think this was 2011. So CrossFit was really just coming onto the scene and he was a diehard for it and teaching us how to do burpees and uh, air squats and sit-ups and push-ups. And I was the most sore from those like four combo of movements, I was like, this is insane. I'm running, I go to the gym, different things like that. But this workout just crushed me. And from there, I just fell in love with CrossFit. I joined his gym once he had a gym that he opened. And um, and it just kind of snowballed from there where I decided to go to exor- uh, to get my master's in exercise science. And then from there, I had personal training um, jobs and um just it's just been my life for so long so it's almost like i don't know anything other than nutrition and fitness yeah because it's been half my year half my life i've been focusing on it that's awesome living it yeah Yeah. (laughs) so what was it that you did kind of before all that um before crossfit or before uh like getting into like high school i started living in the gym yeah. Like, w- w- was there any other interest you had or any thoughts that you where you might lead in your career? What were your passions were before finding this? And then that like took you down a completely different path? Or was this always kind of in alignment with where you were headed? Actually, as a child, like grade school years, I wasn't very active. Like I didn't participate in school sports necessarily. Um, I was just the I felt like I was a typical kid that maybe played video games, maybe played outside, didn't really do any kind of sports or anything like that. Um, Uh. A lot of TV watching type of thing. But um, (laughs) in high school, I thought I was going to go to school to become a pharmacist because I always wanted to help people, but I did not want to necessarily cut into people or like deal with blood. And... (laughs) And so I thought, well, I can still help people by prescribing medication. So I actually went to sure. um, uh, my first year of college. I went to school to with the with the um, pursuit of becoming a pharmacist. And within the year of like five, four or five chemistry classes or something related to science, I was like, I don't think this is for me. I had to get like a tutor to pass chemistry, and I was like, I think we need to move on to something else. And then that's where I was like, well, I, I really love nutrition and. Um, I maybe just learn the science of it and help people in that way through instead of per, um, medicine to help your problems, focus on preventative medicine through nutrition and how to take care of your body. And that's what really led that um, my journey into where I am now. Yeah. I say you made the right choice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good for you. So yeah. Being a registered dietitian, like did you after coming out of school, did you work for like a, uh, I don't want like an office. Like, did you have in-person clientele and like write diets and do things like that for a while before you came over and uh, started working with WAG and WAG, we can go into that a little bit later, but like your registered dietitian time, like, what was that like? Cause you have to commit like a certain amount of hours to that. Right. Yeah. After the fact. Yeah. 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 Actually, that's a great question. So 
Um, when I was doing my undergrad, it was for dietetics to become a registered dietitian. And at the time, I thought if you were to be a registered dietitian, you're going to be practicing in a clinical setting, like you just said, Josh, in an office, one on one with clients, writing meal plans, or more or less being in a hospital, going to their bedsides, giving diet education. And at that point, I was like, I don't want to be in a hospital. I don't want to do clinical setting and just focus on um, disease management, more or less. So that's where I kind of pivoted and went to get my master's in exercise science because I was like, I really like this fitness thing right now. This is when I was really deep into to CrossFit, like just drinking the Kool-Aid and loving it and living in the gym and, and a CrossFit gym. Yeah. And... I was like, I'll just keep going to school until I'm, you know, until I figure out what I really want to do and went to, um, got my master's, like I said, master's in exercise science. And from there I was out of college. I was doing some personal training jobs, some various jobs. Um, I coached at a CrossFit gym, wasn't really making a lot of money and wasn't really loving the hours Like you probably know, Josh, like very early on, if you're doing all the classes you're waking up super early to coach the yeah. 5 a.m or 6 a.m class and you can stay all day until 7 p.m so it was just a really long day yeah, it's exhausting and it is and yeah. i was like i don't see myself doing this in 10 years like just driving myself to the ground and being exhausted in and out of a gym this kind of schedule i was like what can i do differently and I noticed there was always a common theme of if I was doing a group fitness class or if I was doing a one-on-one -on -one personal training, I would always end up talking to my clients or athletes about nutrition. Like, what do you eat for breakfast? What are you eating for lunch? You know, what are some things that we can change? And then at that point, I realized it's like, I actually still really love nutrition. Let me figure out what I can do um, to work in the nutrition field and um, help people in that manner. And I remember that I could still become a registered dietitian because out of college with a nutrition degree, you're not automatically a registered dietitian. And so I was like, let me see if I still have all the prerequisites needed, if I'm still within the window to pursue becoming a registered dietitian. And actually I was within like a couple months of like my prerequisites almost expiring where I would have to start taking um, classes to get like a refresher on some of these basic nutrition principles. So this was five years after I graduated from undergrad that I decided I'm going to go back to school to become a registered dietitian. And at the time, I had actually just started working for WAG. I started working for WAG in April. And at the same time, I was like, just got accepted to a distant program to pursue my registered dietitian. So I was actually doing both of them at the same time. I was uh, completing my RD um, requirements. So I was like working in doing my internship, um, working in and doing my additional classes that I had to have and working and coaching clients at the same time. And then within a year, I was a registered dietitian while still managing WAG. I was part-time, of course. And then from there, I moved to full-time. And I've just been... So my RD experience has only <laughs> been within WAG. Like, I, I've only been able to really practice it within WAG. I never really had that experience of sitting in a um, an office or going to bedside because... Oh, yeah. I was already doing kind of the health and fitness nutrition aspect of it um, before I would become a registered dietitian. So long, <laughs> that was a very long answer to your very short <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of decided early on that that's not what you wanted. You know, like you yeah, said, yeah. like you were like, this is not what I want to do. And what like a, just the happen, just the way the, the timeline went for you know you were just finishing your rd then you got like involved with wag because you were with wag like as a client like previous mm -hmm. to that and then you got into the coaching uh like the coaching certification and stuff that we did and then became a coach like everything just flowed i mean that's a pretty pretty cool way to just right off the bat use all your education in a way that yeah. really suited 
you know, kind of exactly what you wanted to do. Uh, absolutely. So that's, and it, that's cool. and I think things happen for a reason and this whole, the whole like timeline of all of that absolutely just happened for a reason. And it happened at the exact right time. Um, cause I think Christy, you said like that you were asking, don't you have to like do the internship and do a, some, a bunch of free labor? Yeah. With essentially like 200 hours or something yeah, or yeah, something. I you got to commit to it. Yeah. I forget how many hours it is, but you do, you essentially have to commit to free labor, like meant, like working underneath the mentors in the fields and helping them out as they needed, as they need, but you really don't make any money while doing that. Um, you might mm. get a stipend from your program, but you're essentially just learning and doing stuff to become a registered dietitian for free. And if you know, in this world, you can't necessarily just get through a full year on not making any money. And so it was actually just perfect timing. I had just started working for WAG. I got accepted into this program. I was like, I could manage this. I can work first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening, answer my clients, maybe hit a few um, clients in the middle of the day during my lunch break, be able to make a little bit of money so that way I can have food to eat, things like that until I can get back to full time and um, once the I was a registered dietitian, so it was actually like just perfect timing and it worked out. That's killer. Um, very well. Yeah. Mm, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So that kind of brings up an inter interesting point with you being a registered dietitian and some changes that are coming to WAG and that's uh, kind of modifying your role uh, in the company a bit and putting more on your plate, literally, <laughs> um, <laughs> is the fact that on March 1st, WAG is now going to offer something we've never offered in our you know, lifetime of being a company um, is meal plans. And uh, that's something that you and our other on staff registered dietitian, Brittany, our head coach, are working on essentially, you know, pumping out um, as we've kind of been beta testing it with our existing clientele. And then we are going live with it on March 1st and just offering it to existing clients, the general public, whoever's interested in meal plans. So do you want to talk a little bit uh, about that, how that's been going and, um, you know, what you're enjoying about that? and Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, Brittany, um, presented this idea, I would say maybe near the end or around fall of last year, she was like, Hey, do you want to start working on this meal plan plan project that I have? I was like, yeah, absolutely. It actually got sidelined for a little bit, um, just due to some things that were happening near the end of last year. Um, but at the beginning of the year, it got put back onto the table and we just spear, spearheaded it to where now we offer meal plans to all of our clients. If they're not to all of them, well, we, we have it as an offering, I should say, that yeah. if they're interested <laughs> in it, they can um, purchase one, get a full personalized seven day meal plan. And then now we have the option that's starting here next week that anybody can buy a meal plan. And it is designed to help them go from, um, to essentially go through a weight loss phase on their own. And depending on their, their current weight, they'll have three different phases and they just follow the, the, I think it's a four day meal plan, but they can of course repeat meals as they need to. And, um, as they're progressing, they can move down to the next phase, to the next phase to, to hopefully reach their goals. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a little taste of what, um, coaching can be for them, but they do it a little bit on their own. Yeah. To, um, but the whole process, I've actually really enjoyed it. It's, 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 um, it's actually a little bit more challenging than you think you, it would be and a little bit more time consuming just sitting there and planning out meals and making sure that every little gram is, is sure. counted for, yeah. but it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. providing <laughs> me some ideas to like make new meals myself and, and just different combos. And so it's been a nice little change up of just, instead of just coaching clients, cause that's what yeah. I was doing for quite a long time was I was one of the full, the only full-time coaches just mm -hmm. solely coaching clients. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. I, I didn't want to cut you off there. Sorry. Oh, no, just, yeah, I think that's great. And, uh, and then, and just to comment on that, but yeah, just the, you know, the handful of clients of mine that have gotten opted to get the meal plans that I've seen come over from both you and Brittany, just see looking at them, they're great. They're beautiful. 
they're well laid out. They're easy to follow. Um, whether it's, you know, getting a set of macros, uh, if you're coming in off the street and saying, Hey, I want to try this meal plan. And we kind of just kind of calculate some rough macros for you as guidelines, right. Is kind of the process for mm-hmm. that coming in the door, as opposed mm-hmm. to if an existing client of any of us coaches comes in, um, and requests a meal plan, uh, the coaches get kicked a questionnaire to answer some questions about what we see in their food logs, what their preferences and trends tend to be. So it is this very custom tailored thing. We're not just saying, Hey, here's one major meal plan that we have. And then we've modified a couple of things and then just said, good luck. Like these are truly customized meal plans, uh, like something you're not, you're not really going to get from other services out there. You know, like we were actually taking the time to genuinely construct it to the individual based on their preferences, their needs and their goals. So I think that's one of the bigger outstanding parts of our meal plan offerings for sure. 100%. 100%. And it's like, if you don't have, if you, there's foods you don't like, we make sure to not include those. If you have certain um, preferences, like meal preferences, like you only want to eat two meals a day. I've worked mm. on a meal plan for that person. I've even worked on meal plans for individuals that aren't focusing really hard on macros. Like we're maybe following a calorie, um, a calorie count plus protein emphasis. So I, oh. I focus on just... Um, here's an example of what 1600 calories can look like. Here's what it looks like to hit 135 grams of protein and then carbs and fats just kind of fall as they are. So it's really, like you said, it's a very individualized, um, meal plan when you are working through your coach of of what you can get. Mm. And, um, and just going back to what you said, it was very simple to follow. That is our main focus. Like we don't want to like drown you with a bunch of recipes that co- that you have to get 15 different ingredients for it's really just super basic to where it's like oh why didn't i even think about these combos of foods like this is almost so easy and that's mm-hmm. the whole design by it we want it to just be so super easy to where you can follow you can execute you can reach your goals and just get to that next level type of thing. absolutely well, it's a great tool and a guide, guidance or guideline for those who aren't aware of how to make a well-balanced or well-macro, yeah. uh, you know, ratio to meal. Um, so we're providing that structure for them. And then hopefully that's encouraging to them to realize the freedom that they have to really kind of come up with a meal plan of their own, which WAG is a big advocate of and what a lot of pre clients ultimately end up learning through working with their coach is how to structure and assemble a meal in a way that is, you know, nutrient dense, filling, satisfying, also helps keep a pace to the total caloric intake, protein intake, whatever it is, the markers that they're, you know, uh, aiming for. And um, it's really great because uh, it's just another level of helping people understand this so that we can guide others to their nutritional freedom. And it's a beautiful thing. I'm happy that we're offering that and that you and Brittany are working on that. It's awesome. It's going to be exciting to see where it goes. Yeah, I'm really sure. excited. It's already been a super big hit with our um, cli- our wa- clients within WAG. So I'm very excited to see um, what others outside of WAG might like about it. Sure. So um, going back to you were talking about um, coaching like full time and being, you know, one of the only coaches that um, was just strictly doing that, you know, and you did that for a number of years. Um, mm-hmm. What would you say, like, what's one of the biggest like wins uh, wins, uh, I'm trying to think of a better word to use, but like you've coached a lot of people, you've yeah. been through a lot with a lot of people, um, as mm-hmm. we all have. Um, but what would you say like over the years or even in recent memory is one of like the biggest like achievements you've had as a coach, you know, with a client, you know, um, would love to hear about that too. Yeah. Honestly, I, I can't pick just one because I feel like every single person that I've worked with, we have achieved something that is almost not, not I wouldn't say pivotal because pivotal feels like a really big word, but something that, you know, I feel like I've just made a mark on a lot of my clients, but a few of like the biggest wins and something that I'm actually like really happy and proud of when we get to this moment with any client that I work with is when they tell me, Alex, I don't think you can help me anymore. I feel like we have covered everything that we possibly could have covered. I have all of this knowledge, all of these tools, all of these skills. You taught me how to meal plan. You taught me how to navigate this scenario. You taught me how to get through the holidays to where I feel like I can graduate. And I've had a number of 
of clients mm-hmm. that even in, I feel like in this past, like first half of this year, maybe the past six months, I've had a few clients who are like, Alex, I think I'm ready to graduate. I'm ready to fly or spread my wings and, and get away from the, <laughs> the yeah. nest. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. ready to fly. And I'm like, go, baby bird, go. Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's like the most proudest moment that, you know, just something that's like, okay, I have really poured myself into this person. They soaked in as much as they possibly could. They really, you know, took this journey and um, just made the most of it to where now they are fully equipped to do it on their own. And they might even want to help others do it. Like they've also taken, taken the WAGS coaching certification. They're, Mm -hmm. they're starting to help others with their nutrition to just the point of it's like teaching others to also help others. It's just kind of this great effect. And so those are like my really is proud. My most proud moments is just, when people are like, I'm ready to graduate and I'm, I don't need you anymore. Which yeah. is, is this, it's kind of like a, it's a weird thing to say, like as a nutrition coach where people don't need you anymore, but that's essentially like what we're in the business to do. And I feel like I've heard that um, on some of the earlier wife podcasts. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's essentially like what we're trying to do is get, get each client to a place where they might not need us anymore. Yeah. Um, it's not the best business model, but it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's just, that's the purpose of, you know, nutrition coaching. Mm-hmm. For yeah, sure. We're sad to see them go, but we're so stoked to see them stand on their own two feet proudly, confidently, and with yes. all the tools that they need to navigate their nutrition, maintain their uh, results for hopefully, hopefully the rest of their life. Right. And if they end up needing our help, we'll be here, but hopefully they don't. And yeah. that's a success in our book, you know, and it's a beautiful. Yeah, thing for sure. <laughs> Definitely. For sure. Yeah. So on that note, like, so aside of like kind of accomplishments, that's an interesting answer too. Cause I think, yeah, a lot of coaches have had a hard time kind of answering that. They're like, well, I, don't, I can't say there's any one thing in particular, but yeah, you worded that beautifully where there was something mm-hmm. maybe pivotal, maybe profound on whatever level to that person. Right. Because someone's profoundness is, you know, it's a range. It's relative. Uh, it's yes. relative to that person totally. and their yep. experience, you know? Yep. And that's what we're in the business of doing is helping that individual realize what their bar is, what their capabilities are, and pushing them to it to say, guess what? You can do this. And like, I'm here to show you that, you know? And so it kind of just break opens the, the bounds of possibility. Um, so on that note, though, if you were to have like maybe one general generic sense of like a piece of advice or a tip around nutrition or mindset lifestyle whatever it is you get to choose like what's one piece of advice that you love to give your clients i always always say consistency is greater than perfection um so many people come to ag thinking they have to be perfect and if they're anything less then they're not doing it right. And I have really stressed the importance that it's really just consistency that's going to take you to where you want to be, whether you get there faster or you get there, you know, a little bit slower, as long as you're consistent to some degree, you're consistently making a better choice um, or you're consistently hitting your macros or you're consistently doing just something better, you're going to see the changes that you want to see. And that's uh, something that I've really tried to nail down or really preach to a lot of uh, my clients is that as long as you're consistent and you keep being consistent, you're going to get the results that you want. And, um, and I'm here to help you along the way. Like I'm here trying to tweak a few things, give you some suggestions, but just keep being consistent. So that's where we can work as a team to get you to where you want to be. Well said, well said. (laughs) Yeah. Take that. Yeah. Yeah. Great piece of advice. And that's the really, that's a a big thing that we, we try to drive home, you know, is that anything is possible with a little bit of consistency or a lot of consistency, but consistency is the common thread through uh, what is being successful. Ultimately, you know, so if you can stay consistent with one thing, instead of trying to juggle 100 things, you're going to feel a lot better about doing that than failing at juggling a hundred things, you know, than yeah. solidly click carrying one or two main components uh, that is um, affecting the obstacles that you overcome in your daily life. You know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. And it, and it's advice that is just so simple 
and it's not sexy, but it's really like, that's yeah. the key to where you want to be is if you're consistent, like it gets the job done. It's as Josh is actually my nutrition coach. And uh, <laughs> he tells me all the time, cause I'll come to the week. I'm like, well, there's not much has happened. I'm just kind of in a routine. I'm doing everything, you know, pretty consistently. And he's like, that's where we want to be. We don't want to have like all these things going on and you're just kind of just cruising because that's where you get most of the, um, the results that you want. That's where you're getting in the reps and, and just being consistent is, mm. is helping you get to where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Hell yeah. That, that piece of advice came to me. I mean, long ago from one of my coaches too, you know, I think I wrote, yeah, something along the same lines is, kind of a boring week. And he was like, boring's good. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. what we want. That's when, that's where the progress is made, you know? Um, no so news I, I think is good about, news. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think about that all the time. Yeah. Um, I, um, wanted to, uh, along the lines of like nutrition, you know, just like consistency, you are a competitive, like CrossFit athlete. You do competitions. Um, you've had a pretty successful run these last couple, um, and I'm, I'm thrilled with that. Uh, I wanted to know, um, about your like mindset and kind of like mentality going into like a competitive environment like that. Um, I guess we could break it up between actually doing like the workouts and then we can maybe talk about nutrition too, but like going into something like that, or even the open, right. We got the open going on right now. Um, this is some people's only chance throughout the entire year to really step it up and, compete, you know, uh, against their gym members or fellow gym members, I should say, or, and then people across the world. So when you go into a competition environment, like what's going through your head, what are you trying to remind yourself of? Do you have any like mantras or things that, that you say to yourself to keep yourself calm? Like, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. And let me just preface when you say competitor, I'm very local level. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I want to be very humble here. Um, I'm just <laughs> humbling myself. I'm a very lo local competitor athlete. I, I always had dreams of going to regionals when it was a thing. Um, but I think that's long, long gone, but I do well at the local competitions, but going back to your question, what is the mindset? She does very well, gang. She does very well, <laughs> but go, but go ahead. Um, but go ahead. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, some mindset things. So very early on in my career as a CrossFitter, I of course started competing. And at the time I took it way too seriously. I, I would, um, I would cry sometimes if I didn't mm. do the best, mm -hmm. I would, um, walk away from the competition, just feeling absolutely just disappointed in myself and things like that. And I think I had a few conversations with my husband and at the time he was my boyfriend and he was like, Alex, this is not paying your bills. This is not necessarily going to, um, make or break your life. This is something that you're doing for fun. So if you're not having fun doing it, then why do it at all? And I was like, okay, you, 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 you made a point. Like if I, if I'm going <laughs> to compete, win. yeah, I, you win. Yeah. you're right. Um, which most time he is right. And, uh, <laughs> I'll admit it. He has some really good advice all the time. I hope he listens um, to this episode. Yes. I hope he does. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, so he said, just have fun. And from that point, I started having fun. I would go into work, into these competitions with the mindset of, I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to have this, a great time because I love working out and cr doing CrossFit on a daily basis. I have fun day in, day out. I do well day in, day out. So why not do the same thing on a, at a competition? And sure enough, as soon as I had fun, I started doing really well in the competitions. Um, I would just have this level of confidence and just this level of like, I'm going to attack, I'm going to go and attack this workout. And it just paid off. And I think I recently heard something that the biggest, um, I'm going to butcher this, but it's, it's essentially that as if an athlete has confidence, they're almost unstoppable. It's like you, you can't even reach that, that athlete. If they have confidence and just have fun, it is like untouchable. 
they can have all the talent in the world. They can be the strongest person, but if they don't have the confidence, they they'll always fall short. Mm-hmm. So, and I really have seen that in my own performance. It's just going in and having fun, and from there, I do really well. And then the, another thing that I always um, keep in in my mind, and this just goes back to like my training and even approaching the open is that is something that my husband told me once before uh, he would always say right before competition that, and he still says it, it's not like he's gone, but he still says it, that the hay is in the barn as in like, you've put in (laughs) all of this work, you have prepared yourself in multiple different ways. So now you just have to go out there and execute. Like if you can't do something, oh, well, but you know, you've prepared enough. So just go see what you're capable of. And that helped to kind of take a lot of stress away from it and just make comp- competing um, enjoyable. So those are two things. Have fun and just trust that the work that you've put in is enough for where you're you're at right now. And just go see what you're made out of. That's awesome. What you can do. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, those, those workouts, I mean, at, a, at like a competition or the open, I mean, these are tests. You know, these are tests to see how you've done the past year, you know, and for some, sometimes there's movements that you you have that are really great. And sometimes there's movements that you have that are not. And it's like that should guide like your intention and the way that you, you know, pursue the rest of the year. Or I mean, if you're not super concerned about competing, then maybe at least the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months, you're going to be, you're going to be fired up about like improving on one of these things that you encounter in a competition or the open. Um, so yeah, I think that's, those are two pieces of great advice. I mean, yeah, I absolutely would agree. Um, as far as nutrition goes, um, and I, I, me and you have talked about this <laughs> at length, uh, um, going into competitions, but like for the listeners out there, um, what would you say, like some of like the, the changes that you've made, uh, over the past, like couple months that have like maybe improved how you feel during competitions, because I know that like when I compete, like nerves get very high and it's like, I don't want to eat, but I know that I need to, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, what would you say are some of the things that, um, you've done or maybe that we've covered in the past, like couple months that have helped, um, you improve like during these like stressful workouts or these stressful competition situations? Definitely. So start starting back, I would say in the summertime, cause I, I've been doing like a competition. It feels like almost every other month here lately. So starting mm-hmm. back in the summertime, I made a mention to you that I was going to be doing some competitions and I want to really perform well. And from there, uh, you, you essentially made sure that I was eating enough. So that's a huge thing is, you know, even though I know there's a question about the nerves and I'll get to that, but it just, it starts way sooner or way earlier than you think it starts Mm. like preparing for competitions. It's making sure that you have enough food fuel on a daily basis and not being scared of the amount of food that you may have to eat. Like my, um, my intake got pretty high. Like I was eating close to three, 3000 calories. I mean, I'm yeah. not that far off of it right now, yeah. but, um, I've gotten to the point where I, I eat a good amount of food and I'm not necessarily like a large individual to, um, to a, like where it would be like, Oh yeah, eating 3000 calories. That's normal. Um, I would, I don't think I'm that large to, to, but anyway, so the point is, is that you, you really stress that eating enough is critical for performance, critical critical for recovery. And I think that's what's really going to help prepare for any kind of competition that you're doing is if you want to perform well, then making sure that you're training, um, that you're eating to train to perform well and eating to recover from that training um, will just help get you to a place to where when you do show up for competition, you feel amazing. And then some things that me and you've worked on um, specifically for training and for competing is making sure that I time my nutrition right, like have certain carbohydrates um, around my workouts and the importance of fueling right afterwards, playing around with some different things in terms Mm -hmm. of different types of carbohydrate sources, because that can make a really big difference. Like if you're eating carbohydrates that might not necessarily absorb 
quickly into your system, you might not get the net, the amount of energy that you possibly could um, have. And so we've, we played around like things from fruit to like dextrose, dextrose sources where you're just yeah. drinking the carbohydrates, mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit easier to consume if you are having nerves on competition day to keep the the fuel that you are consuming really easier on your stomach um, it can just help make sure that you have the energy when you need it and um, you're able to access it. So those have been some like things that we've, we've, we've um, tried out. I mean, when I came to you, didn't necessarily have a super hard job um, making, <laughs> you know, with, with my nutrition, it's been pretty consistent for a, very a good, consistent. good yeah. very consistent for a very long time. And so it was more or less like tweaking those little things. It's like, now this is where we add the supplements. This is now where we play around with the nutrition timing. This is where we get into the nuances of nutrition to really take your performance to the next level and, and trying out some different things. And that's been very successful. Um, the last couple competitions I've done, I've had like no issues with how I felt um, energy wise, it's more or less like maybe a movement that I, that I'm not necessarily proficient at or something like that. So the nutrition part is dialed in and it really just comes to practicing very early on so that when you show up to competition day or open day, you're not trying anything new. And then mm -hmm. you're like, well, I didn't feel great because I ate this. Well, you, cause if you don't normally eat that, you might not feel great type of thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I, like, again, I wasn't, I know that like we, you know, we worked together for a while now and it was, I, I wasn't like looking for anything in particular, but just for like the listeners that might be and, you know, just getting into competitions or um, again, like the open is a, is a thing, you know, and people really go for it during when these workouts are presented. So like anything that you could, you know, share, with the folks um, that could maybe help them prepare. And I think those things are so important. I, I say that to people all the time that like the, um, what you do the week before the competition mm -hmm. is just as, if not more important than the competition day itself. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. That's super, I must... super important. <clears throat> yeah. This is actually a piece of advice that I give my clients. Not often, but I'll, I'll make a mention every now and then it's, one time I heard that what you consume now affects you 10 days from now. Um, and it can affect you oh. 10 weeks from now and 10 months from now. So it's like the choices that you're making today can set you up for success or maybe not as much success in the, in the future, especially in the sport of CrossFit where seconds count. It's like, why not? make sure that you have your nutrition dialed in super early so you can get every single second or every single rep that you possibly can in training. So when you show up to competition day, you're just, you can do that exact same thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this it's more or less focusing in on it earlier than you think you need to, um, making sure you're feeling your body enough and then, um, practicing things in training. When I say things like different, combinations of food, different types of foods. Um, so that way, when it comes to the game day, whether it's your open performance one time a year, or it's a local competition, or even something on a bigger stage, you know exactly what to lean on to where you don't even have to think about nutrition, um, or you don't even have to think about your food, you can just solely focus on showing up, having fun, and then um, the workout that's, you know, right in front of you. Yeah. Bingo. Love it. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've covered pretty much everything we wanted to cover with you today. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Alex. It's been and great. We wanted to yeah. thank you for your time. It's been a great interview. Um, we hope everyone enjoyed getting to know Alex a little bit more. Uh, if you guys are looking to um, up your game in your competitions of any kind, CrossFit, anything else, we do have a free competition guide, fitness competition guide. Uh, I'll put that in the show notes for everyone to go check out and download. If anyone listening is interested in working with myself, Josh, or Alex as one-on-one uh, -on -one nutrition coaching services, uh, as a listener of the WAG Inside podcast or the Inside Nutrition 
Inside Wag Nutrition <laughs> Podcast, rather. How about we get it right? Uh, if you <laughs> use code Inside Wag at checkout at workingagainstgravity.com slash join, uh, we will be happy to give you $50 off your first month of one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching. And we hope you uh, definitely uh, use that code. We want to we want to see more people in here. We want to help help more. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So, yes. yeah, thank uh, thank you all very much for for listening. And Alex, thanks again for coming on. Uh, thank really, you guys. It's been a blast. Yeah, it's really really cool. Right. So, um, gang, we'll, we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks a lot.